Hey everyone, welcome to Crazy Gamers and Models. I got another review for you guys. I have picked up some Vallejo model color. This is their military set. It is 70, 72 bottles of paint. And I'm going to review this one a little differently. So um, let's just let's just open it up and we'll take a look. Now I've already been in here because um, that will come apparent later. So you get some pamphlets talking about the military colors and things like that you know same stuff and you get three brushes three of their Torre brushes they're not bad so but it comes with it it's got 72 colors two of the colors which are a thinner medium and a they're, they're stuck in here let me tell you and a matte varnish so that's that and then it's got 70 colors here and I'm going to do a little different since this is a big thing of paint. There's a lot of colors. This is their military colors line. And mainly that's what I do is military video, military things now. Um, I'm going to get my white piece of paper. And I'm going to show you what these colors look like on this white piece of paper. And I'm hoping my lighting is good. I'm hoping everything works out for the lighting. And if you don't like this type of video for showing off the paints... Then let me know in the comments and I won't do it again. So, my brush wet. Now, I had this opened because I had tried to film this earlier and my memory card wore out, ran out. And it was long anyways because none of the paints were mixed and I had to shake them all. I shook them all on camera. This time I pre-shook everything with my robot hobby paint shaker. Not the battery operated one, the one that plugs in the wall. It's a fantastic paint shaker. It is not like the best paint shaker, but it works. So, it does not work on Citadel paints, just to let you know. Or Tamiya, it works on basically the dropper bottle paints. So, the first color we're going to look at is the German Gray. And it is an RAL7016. So gonna... Put a little bit right there that back and then we're going to spread it out here and see what we got so now you can see what that looks like on the white there so that would be the german gray i hope this guy's is coming across next we have is a german camo dark green i'm going to bring you guys in a little bit hopefully you can see this better Bring it down there. And the light will be better. Okay. So this is the German camo dark green. Now it's not focusing. I think I'd have this figured out by now. So we got the German Caro Dark Green. This is an REL color, and it's also an FS color. Now let's take a look at this. So that's what we have there. Probably could have been mixed a little bit better. So we have, that would be, that is the dark camo and green. And now we have a black green. From Vallejo. This is our black green. That's it's green. It's greenier. I like the dark camo green better. So far, anyways. And we have a flat earth, which is an FS color. That's what that looks like on white. I'm doing this all on white. I'm not going to, and it's not plastic. I understand that. But you get a sense of the colors. The um, only reason I'm doing this this way is because, you know, when I'm looking to get paint, I like to see what they look like in a set. You know, buying one bottle of paint is one thing, but when you're buying a set like this, you don't know what you're going to get. I would like to see this myself personally online and I don't see it online so I got this set and I'm gonna do it. 
So this is a saddle brown, another FS color. Saddle brown right here. And this isn't your kind of video. I'm sorry. Just, you know, skip through it. I'm going to try to get through it. Not take too long. And as you can see, some of them are already thicker than others. Like that German gray and then that last one. This one is the Hall Red. This is one of my favorite model color model colors. This is one of my favorite ones right here. Love that color. The inside of a German tank right there. That is my color. Any kind of red oxide primer, that's the color I, I like. I like that Hall Red for any kind of red oxide primer. So... Then we have a deck tan. It's a nice light, say a light sand color, like a light beach sand. And now we have khaki. So let's see what we got here for khaki. Okay, that's a little more green brown than the khaki I'm used to, but you know, I hope these are coming across on the camera correctly. So now we have a Russian uniform World War II. A lot of air bubbles in the ones that the paint shaker shook. So that's that. Let me keep my brush dry. That was a Russian uniform, World War II. Now we have a color that is great for German base colors, for German armor. It is the dark yellow. Dark yellow. It's a nice color right there. Move that around. It came out there. Oh. And then we have a desert yellow. Oh, yeah. Not to contaminate it with too much water. That would be your desert yellow. All right. And then we have buff, which is a good Tamiya color. Tamiya makes a good buff. All right, so too much again. Look at that. All right. So there we go with the buff. There we go with that. So what is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 colors so far. So out of 70. So now we have a German uniform. Uniform here. Let's bring that around. Well, my water is going to be a unique color after all this. And then we have military green. And that is a nice dark, I would almost say that's a dark U.S. green right there. It's a nice color. All right, now we have field blue. Now we're getting to the colors I'm a real big fan of. There we go, field blue. 
we have white. I'm not going to put down white people. It's white. And then we have black. Also not going to put down black. And now we have German camo extra dark green. Back that up just a little bit more. It's not focusing. There we go. German camo extra dark green. Go. Oh, extra camo. German camo, extra dark green. You want to know what it looks like? There it is on a white piece of paper. I was going to use some styrene, but I would have had to prime it. And this is the red, which I think is, I don't know, looks a little pink to me. That is a red, though. Wouldn't have normally showed you red because it's red, but that red comes off a little pinkish to me. I don't know how it comes in the video. Now we have a yellow Oliva. Alright. It's so that color. It's more of a you get you put on a Sherman. Kind of green camo schemed tank. World War II, that would be a good color. We have Japanese uniform World War II. It's not a bad color. That would actually work for a base for a, a German tank, also. Maybe a Stug. Stug. We have uniform green. Well, these colors are pretty similar, but they all have their uniqueness, unique color. Did you see a color, a color fold out of the colors and you just don't? What you're getting, and you see it online, and it's tiny. I like to, you know, I have one store near me that does Vallejo colors, and their selection is horrible. It's um, actually Tommy Lobby, they have like 12 different colors, and they're all awful colors, and not much to choose from. It's hard. We don't have a lot of model and hobby around me. I have a hobby town and a another independent hobby store. And then, you know, Hobby Lobbies are Michaels, but they don't carry... Michaels doesn't carry anything that is model-related model by me. It is literally nothing. I mean, even their selection of oil paints, like their Windsor and Newton oil paints, is very limited. I don't know what the deal is with that. So that is the tan yellow. Showed you that. That's tan yellow. And then we have a refractive green. There we go with refractive green here. That's a nice dark green. Some of them are definitely thinner than others. I'm trying to get all that water out of that brush every time. And then we have an olive gray. This is olive gray. Over here. Just want to shout out to my I got I got someone signed up for my Patreon. Thank you so much. Um, I appreciate it. Big shout out to you. Thank you so much. I, I've just edited it, edited my page, and I'm adding stuff to it. So I put up a video. There'll be some rewards out there coming up in the near future when I work out all the details. I'm very new to this whole Patreon thing. And I'm trying to get put out better videos and, you know, label my videos better and categorize my videos better that was olive brown 
So trying to I get get wore out real early in the day. So this one is our US dark green. I started filming in ultra high def 4K on the camera, on the maximum the camera would do, and a 20 minute video took three hours to render on my very slow old PC. This is a camo olive green. So I had to bump it down to, I don't know, Q, QHD. Which I don't know if that's just a camera specific thing, but it's not a high end camera, but it does exactly what I want it to do. So, this is US Olive Drab. And I, and I, I mainly got these model colors, I like the way they brush. I, I think they. They brush on really, really well. So, okay, now we have a bronze green. So, bronze green here. It's not a bad color for picking out some cockpit detail, maybe. A nice shadow color. Nice shadow color right there. So we have a dark sea blue. Now let's check out this one here. That's pretty too. I like that. So I don't know what I would use that for. The base of a water ocean diorama. Then we have a dark Prussian blue. Sorry if I bumped the camera. I'm going to do a video of my workspace here when I get it finished. And you'll be surprised that the well, equipment I work with is very limited. I've kind of pieced things together. on Walmart is my friend. Um... This is the, the dark Prussian blue. That's not bad. That's a pretty blue. And then now we have a intermediate green. We didn't have a beginner green or an advanced green, so I don't know what it's an intermediate of. So there we go with that. All right. We're getting there, guys. Three rows left here. Now we have a gray green. I had some dark pigment in there. That's a pretty color. I don't know my uses for it. But like I, I was I did a bunch of research before I picked one of these kits. I was gonna get the model color kit. But it mostly had railroading colors in it. And then I looked at their Panzer series. Oh, it's stuck. And this one is beige brown. This one's actually from their Panzer series. And I did a small review on the Panzer series camouflage that's up on the channel. And they, they were nice. And I was looking at the Panzer series. And then I realized that most of the colors more uniform colors and more I mean they had some but they really didn't have any colors for interior things not a lot of um, RAL colors or RLM colors so I decided on this military US field drab because if you look on Alejo's website it shows you all the colors you get in the kit and what you would get in the base kit. And the base kit is nice for about 15 of the 72 colors, but all the other ones are more basic. They're not a lot of custom camo or things like that. And the Panzer series was, like I said, 
a lot of uniform colors. So this one is chocolate brown. So this is the military, and it's what I decided on going with. And like I said, I've been through all these because I had to shake them all vigorously. You would think on the truck they would have been shaken. But... Oop, they were bad. Had to use the shaker on most of them. This is stone gray. Right there. Stone gray. Nice thick one. And these can be airbrushed with thinner. I use um, Vallejo's airbrush thinner for these. Um, some people use alcohol. I have tried alcohol and I find that I get the tip clog thing way more often. This is going to be silver gray. So that's not bad. Yeah, I find when I. I, I I primed in my early building and miniature days when I first picked up this hobby as a suggestion from my doctor. I primed with Vallejo surface primers and that's about all I did. Um, and I started doing the board games I was into. This one is khaki gray. And I started with the board games and I started with Zombicide and I used Vallejo's um, and Army Painter's um, Zombicide set. And then I found that a lot of the colors I didn't like and I didn't care. I mean, the Army Painter's good for that specific thing, but then I wanted to paint my Star Wars Imperial Assault and my Descent Journeys in the Darkness. So I got the um, Vallejo Game Air set and, and I airbrushed them. And I brush painted with them. This is the old gold. So I use them for most of my stuff. I mean, I use the Citadel paints for specific colors. On like my Admec, I used, but a lot of it, like the base of my Admec, I primed them in Vallejo's silver plate metal. And all my knights I primed in Vallejo plate metal. So this one is oily steel. This one might be nice. I don't I've never used Vallejo's metal colors. And they're not they don't look bad. Definitely seems like you can see the size of the pigment though. I don't know how it's going to look dry on plastic. I might do with this oily steel. I might do a gun barrel on one of the machine guns on the Panther. That was oily steel. Then we have brown sand. There we go. Brown sand. I got some, I got a cool tool review coming soon, and I got a video on some tools I use commonly. I just did a little short. I don't want to put too many videos out in one day. People might get mad and not like that. This is German Field Gray World War II. It's not bad. Now I almost got now that I, I believe that you can get these military colors in their air sets too, but I already have most of the colors, at least all the colors I want in the air range. So I'm not into getting those again. I don't have a lot of model color colors. So I didn't mind buying a model color set. I was actually looking to get a model color set and for three or four weeks now and I just had a coupon and it was the right time to pick one up because believe it or not the military color set was cheaper than the base color set and the Panzer series set 
So this one is gun metal gray. And it may be a metal maybe metal in there. Maybe a metal paint. I'm not sure. It says gun metal gray. But I really can't see the metal pigment like I can in the oiled steel or the gold. And it didn't go down like it has the metal pigment in it. So now we have dark sand. Dark sand right here. It's not bad. Nice highlight tone for that dark yellow. Actually more for this one there. Flesh tone. Not a bad flesh tone. High flesh tone. Then we have a sunny skin tone. You know, it's got a sunny skin tone right there. And now we have pale sand. It's a pretty watery one, but that could have been water in my brush. So, and we have dark blue gray. This may be a 30 minute video, guys. I'm sorry about that. I'm building anything. So, that is your dark blue gray. Also, if you made it through this far, you're pretty dedicated, and I appreciate that. If you would want to see a model built and just seeing building techniques and no painting, let me know, because I might be teaching my son some building techniques. This is German Camo Bright Green, and just building one of my Panthers with... No painting involved, just building the model outright. And I don't know if anybody would want to see that. If you do, let me know in the comments, because I'll do that. I'll video it. Um, this is gray-green. But um, I might paint the exterior of it. But he wants to see a interior kit go together without painting and all that, because... He wants to build one with an interior kit, but he doesn't, he's not into the painting. And I told him, that's fine. Just, you know, they have easier interior kits, but I don't know if anybody would be interested in seeing one that's not getting painted. Or an aircraft that's not getting painted. Um, he, he sparked interest in wanting to see that also. So if you guys, that was tanned earth, by the way. So if you, if you guys are interested in just building techniques, um, let me know, and I will, I will do a video on just building techniques. And it will be something that's built very quickly, because it doesn't have to be painted, and it doesn't have to be staged. This is brass. This one definitely has metal pigment in it. It's not too far off from that gold. I might paint one of my shell casings with this brass, but I have the AK True Metal Brass that I had got specifically for my shells on my German tanks because I have evidence that they were brass. Some of them were brass and some were, some were black casings, steel. This is a German orange that didn't get mixed very well as I see that now. So it's more of a grapefruit now. It might look better mixed. Now we have a Luftwaffe Uniform World War II. I butchered that. I guarantee you I did. I never excelled in foreign language. Not for lack of trying. I barely have English down. So that is that Luftwaffen uniform, World War II, like a little purple, blue, gray. 
This is Iraqi sand. Watch out there. It's not bad. And if you do want to airbrush these or brush paint with these, um, I recommend using a thinner. I use um, Liquitex Matte Medium with um, a little bit of Flow Improver. Mostly matte medium and some drops of Flow Improver. I used to cut it with distilled water, but the matte medium by itself seems fine. German Camo Beige World War II. And then there we go. That's that one. This doesn't go on too much more. I'll conduct an experiment at the end of this. Sorry about that. And this is German Camo Black Brown. We're nearly done. We have four after this one. So there's the German Camo Black Brown. You should see this water. I want to show you this water at the end here. This is Lufenwaffen Camo Green. Alright, Lufenwaffen Camo Green. Look at that. It's a very dark, foresty green. Alright. German Ochre. Might be a good yellow for tanks. It is. Mix that with that dark yellow. Nice base coat. The shadows, maybe. And then we have German Camo Pale Brown. Camo Pale Brown. Alright. And last but not least, Dark Sea Green. Now, there we go, Dark Sea Green. Alright. Now, I'm just going to do, I'm going to move this out of the way. That's the 72 colors. And I want to grab this hall red. I grab back the hall red. And I want to test this thinner medium. This thinner medium here. I want to test that with this hall red. Now this side was brushed with Hall Red from an earlier experiment, and I used just water. Now I'm going to brush it with this on this other side with a couple drops of that thinner medium in there and see how that works. As you know, the test bed is the Berg Panther. Let's see how that looks. Set up right there. Ooh. I don't know. I think it really thinned it. We'll see. That was equal parts. Well, doesn't seem to go on too bad. Okay, so that is the Hall Red brushed on with the thinner medium, just to test it out, and it's it seemed to brush on well. Uh, I would have thinned it. I should have thinned it with a little bit of water first. Um, add a little water to it and see what happens because it went on kind of thick. 
That thinner medium is still kind of thick. I might have added too much water. Yeah, see, it, it, it's leaving a better coating with add a little bit of water and the thinner medium. And just do a couple thin coats. Like I said, this is the Merc Panther test mule. So that is that. And just to take a look at the water, it is filthy from all those paints mixing. So that is it for this. Thank you for sticking to the end. I greatly appreciate it. Um, leave your comments below.